setting up the valve gear for Stevenson's link. We've got the eccentrics here on the back axle, and we've got the um, valve rods and the die block. And we've got a forward eccentric, which is this rod here, and a reverse eccentric, which goes to the bottom of the link on this side. So it's forward to the top of the link, reverse to the bottom of the link. And we've got two eccentrics, one for each, one for forward, one for reverse. There's two grub screws in these eccentrics, and the throw of the eccentric is centre line between the two. So it's a good idea just to put a little felt pen mark right on the highest point, so you know what you're setting for. Move the other one round, do the same on the forward one. Now we want to get these marks to line up with the crank pin. So what we're looking for, got the crank pin on the front here, we're going to try and get that on front dead centre, and then on this set of valve gear, we've got this as the forward rod going to the top of the link, and this as the forward eccentric. And that mark, a centre line mark on the eccentric, wants to be leaning forward when the crank pin's forward. So we've got the crank pin at its fullest forward position. We've got the mark. If that's vertical, I've pulled it round so the mark is approximately about 15 or 16 degrees in front of that uh, centre. And then we do the same again on the reverse, but this time because the crank pin's at the back, there, the mark is actually behind the centre line. So if that's the vertical position, is there. Right, so far we've not looked at any other parts of the valve gear, just the two eccentrics. Once we're happy we've got those in the right place then we can move on. So we've got the cylinder with the valve on top. Now the aim is to set that valve so that it will move correctly to distribute the seam steam down into the uh, cylinder itself. We start off by centralising the valve. So putting the reversing lever in its mid-gear position so there should be minimal movement of the valve. Now I'm looking into the uh, top of the steam chest and I can't see the port opening. So there's just a small amount of port opening at the back. Just push it along and I should get the same amount of port opening at the front in half a turn of the wheels and that's with the reversing lever in its mid-gear position. So next we move it down into full gear and see what happens. So the lever's gone right forward into full gear, the link has gone down so that the die block is at the top of the link so now the forward rod, forward eccentric, forward rod is lining up with the die block. And we'll see how the port opening goes. Now we're getting a full port opening at the end and a full port opening at the other end. So that means that the valve is actually going as far as it needs to go. It doesn't want to go any further than that or it'll start to expose the exhaust port and you'll get steam going directly from one to the other. Full forward gear and we're going to check the valve timing actually inside the steam chest. So crank pin on front dead centre and this port at the front just beginning to open. It's only open a whisker. As we move the engine along, it opens full port opening, so that's absolutely as far as the valve wants to go. And now the crank pin has moved down to near the bottom. And as we proceed, we get to near the back dead centre, and at this point, that front port is actually closed. 
I'll run that back and just show you again. So it's gone from full port opening to closed. And that's before it gets to the back dead center. Now as soon as we get actually onto back dead center, the back port should be beginning to open. There it is, it just see it starting to open. And then it goes to full port opening there, which is near the top on the crank pin. And then as we come down, again that's closed as the crank pin is getting towards front dead centre. So it's ready for the next cycle again. So that should now be the front port just beginning to open. There it goes. Now this is for forward gear. We want to uh, move it into reverse gear and make sure the same valve events happen when we're going in the opposite direction. So we've pulled the reversing lever right into backwards and now we're going to run through the sequence again, pushing the loco backwards instead of forwards. So we're now on back dead centre and this port is just about to open. Back port's opening, there's full port opening with the crank pin near the bottom and then as we keep pushing that should close. There it's closed. Crank pin is getting towards um, the front dead centre, we're not quite at it. And as we go past the front dead centre, so the front should open. There it goes. So the front port is just beginning to open with the crank pin on front dead centre. And as we run through the cycle, that goes full port opening with the crank pin near the top. And then runs on to close with the crank pin near back dead centre. And as it goes over that back dead centre, so the back port starts to open again. And that's running through the sequence. You need to set up each side individually to do that. Don't worry about the other side. Just stick to one side, get it right, and then move on to the other side. Final check on valve setting is to have a look at the notch up positions. So I put the lever into the first notch. Now we should get the same valve events, but the port shouldn't open quite as far. So let's just have a look and see what it's doing. Pull the loco along. That's the maximum port opening, so it's only giving you about half a port opening, but it's still at the place where it would normally be. So all the timing should remain the same, and it's just saving a bit of steam by not opening the port so much. Now, if you do need to adjust the valves, the only place to adjust them is on this block here with the two grub screws. So loosen the grub screws, move the valve along, re-tighten them. Don't adjust anything else on the valve gear setup. This is the place to adjust them.